Uh, welcome to Planning Commission members, staff and guests. This is the Planning Commission meeting of the City of Columbia for April 5th, 2021. We ask for your patience during this virtual meeting. Multiple staff members are behind the scenes with us today are Lucinda Statler, Planning Administrator, Rachel Bailey, Zoning Administrator, Jonathan Chambers, Land Development Administrator, and Andrew Livingood, Annexation Coordinator. During the meeting, you will see live images or still images of Planning Commission members and the administrator. However, images of the applicant and the public will not be visible. The public will be able to participate via screen methods in addition to watching the meeting. They may be able to email, to call in, or to log into a web session. And when participating, please provide your name for documentation purposes. If you'd like to watch the meeting, the public may stream the meetings through City TV accessed at www.youtube.com slash user slash Columbia SC government. The public may submit letters and statements via email to COC board meeting at Columbia SC.gov leading up to and or during the meeting, as this account will be monitored during the meeting. Emails and letters sent during the meeting will be read into the record. Emails or letters received prior to the meeting have been forwarded to the commission. The public may participate via phone. You may call 855-925-2801. And when prompted, please enter the meeting code 3506. And I'll go ahead and do a roll call. Mr. Frost. Here. <clears throat> Ms. James. She may be running a little late. Mr. Cohn. Here. Ms. Davis. Here. Mr. Harp. Here. Ms. Hart. Here. Dr. Mandel. Here. Ms. Thomas? Here. Mr. Tupper? Here. And we have a quorum. And Mr. Chairman, if you don't mind, I'd like to note a couple of changes to the agenda since publication. Okay, great. Um, on the original um, agenda that was published, case number 11, which is a street name change, SN-2021-0001, has been deferred, as well as case 13, which is a site plan review, SPLAT-2021-0012. This is for the point at Chestnut Hill Plantation, has also been deferred. Okay. Do we need a motion or anything except in the new agenda or? Um, I don't think so. I think we can just proceed. Okay. With, um, with those deferred items as noted. So I'll give a brief uh, meeting overview. Um, applicants with requests before the Planning Commission are allotted a presentation time of 10 minutes. This time should include, but is not limited to an overview of the project, case history, and any pertinent meetings held regarding the request. This time also includes all persons presenting information on behalf of the applicant, such as attorneys, engineers, and architects. This time limit does not include any questions asked by planning commission or staff regarding requests. Members of the general public are given the opportunity to address their concerns in intervals of two minutes. The administrator has a timer and will make presenters aware of when their time has expired. The Planning Commission reserves the right to amend these procedures on a case-by-case -case basis. The uses the consent agenda to approve non-controversial or routine matters by a single motion and vote. Examples of such items include approval of site plans, annexations, and street names. If a member of the Planning Commission or the general public wants to discuss an item on the consent agenda, that item is removed from the consent agenda 
and considered during the meeting. The Planning Commission then approves the remaining consent agenda items. So to start off on the consent agenda, the first item is the approval of the March 1st, 2021 minutes. And then under the future land use map amendments and zoning map amendments for pending annexation, we've got case number two, which is at 2213 Apple Valley. This is a request for recommendation to assign land use classification of urban edge residential large lot and assign zoning of general residential district for a pending annexation. The property is currently classified as mixed residential and zoned RMMD by Richmond County. Case number three is a 40.18 acre portion on the south side of Old Seasburg Road. Request recommendation to assign land use classification of urban edge residential small lot and assign zoning of single family residential district pending annexation. The property is currently classified as neighborhood and zoned RSHD by Richland County. Case number four is an 80 acre portion on the north side of Percival Road. The addresses are 4621, 4635, 4651, and 4655 Percival Road. Request recommendation to assign land use classification of urban edge residential small lot and assign zoning of general residential district a portion within the flood protective overlay for a pending annexation. The property is currently classified as neighborhood medium density and zone M1 by Richland County. Case number five, 7315 Coachmaker Road, a request recommendation to assign land use classification of urban edge residential large lot and assign zoning a single family residential district for a pending annexation. The property is currently classified as mixed residential high density and zoned RSMD by Richland County. Under site plan review, case number six at 366 Lake Murray Boulevard, request site plan approval for the construction of an 8,010 square foot medical office building for spent land holding. The property is zoned HUD LS, large scale planned unit development. Case number seven, 18.1 acres at 300 Clemson Road, request site plan approval for the construction of a 288 unit multifamily development to Colonial Creek Apartments. The property is zoned RG2 General Residential. And under zoning map amendments, case number eight, it's 707 Catawba Street, request to rezone the parcel from heavy industrial plan development district to office and industrial district plan development district. In case number nine is 1041 Ponderosa Point Drive, a request to rezone the parcel from light industrial district to heavy industrial district. And those are all the items on the consent agenda. Thank you, Lucinda. So we've heard the consent agenda. Is there anyone from the Planning Commission that would like any item removed from the consent agenda? Hearing none. Next slide, maybe. Is there anyone from the public that would like to have an item removed from the consent agenda? When participating, please provide your name for the minutes. You can communicate by sending an email to COC board meeting at Columbia SC.gov. Please communicate via phone by pressing star two to leave a voicemail or star three to speak in person. We will pause to allow communication from the public. Again, the phone number is 855-925-2801 and the meeting code is 3506. Oh, Mr. Frost, this yes. is Andrew. I currently do not have any speakers that have indicated they want to speak. Okay. 
No, I have not seen any emails. No emails. Okay. No speakers on the line with no emails uh, regarding the consent agenda. I'll entertain a motion. Um, I move that we accept the consent agenda. This is Dr. Mandel. Got a motion. Can I get a second? I'll second. All in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed say no. The ayes have it. The consent agenda is approved. The Planning Commission will now move forward with those items on the regular agenda. We will use the following outline for regular agenda items. The administrator will introduce the case. The applicant will have 10 minutes to make a presentation. Planning Commission may ask questions. The public will be allowed to participate via email, voicemail, voice in person, or via the web. Planning Commission may ask additional questions of the applicant, and then we will take action by the Planning Commission. All right, the next item on the agenda, item number 10, is for the Congaree Point PUD. Um, it's currently a planned unit development residential district. They are hoping to rezone to general residential with a portion of general commercial along Bluff Road. Um, so it includes addresses along Bluff, Atlas, um, Culliver Road, Beamer Loop, Congaree Point Drive, Jerry Lane, as well as addresses along Poinsett Loop. So, and this is an undeveloped planned unit development that they're just hoping to rezone to where, to base zoning districts so that they can do some development. So, and um, staff can answer questions as well as I believe the applicant is on the line as well. Okay. Um, does the applicant want to speak regarding the request? Uh, if the applicant is here, I'd be interested in just hearing a brief discussion of what they're wanting to do. Yeah, so, and I shouldn't say the applicant, a representative for Bible Way Church, which has the PUD. So um, DJ, are you on the line? Yes, I'm here. Can everybody hear me? Sorry, I was on mute. Yes. Yes, sir. So we're looking at, to, uh, and I don't know, I, I, we have Michael uh, Healy from uh, Dominion who might be on the line to give you some more information on what we're looking to develop. Um, he's our uh, developing partner um, with the Bible Word Church of Atlas Road, but we're looking to uh, um, create some senior housing and I will let Michael uh, take over from here, but it's a partnership with them to develop some senior housing along the Atlas Road and Bluff Road corridor. Hey, DJ, this is Nick Anderson with Dominium. I'm also on the line and I can, I can um, take that and, and I guess provide a, an introduction to us and to the, to the senior housing we have planned for the site. Um, we have been working with DJ and the church on, um, the rectangular shaped parcel that is um, furthest to the, I guess, northeast on the, the map that is shown there. So it's the, the rectangular uh, shaped piece that <clears throat> is uh, directly across the street from the parking lot of the church. Um, what we have planned for, for that piece is a 196 unit um, senior uh, affordable housing project. The, the project would be um, a four-story building with elevators. Uh, we would do one and two bedroom apartment units um, and rents would range uh, roughly from about seven uh, seventy-five to just under $900, uh, depending on if it's a one or, or two bedroom apartment. Um, uh, we uh, would also include, as part of the project, uh, a community room, a fitness center, 
Uh, we have uh, typically a card and craft room as part of this. Uh, we have a library and business center. Um, so it's a really uh, amenity rich uh, project that, that we're thinking here. And um, uh, we have uh, provided to DJ some um, examples of other projects that we've developed recently that um, uh, sort of shows what that space uh, looks like. But um, that's the general uh, plan for, for the, the site there that's kind of furthest to the northeast on the, the image that you're seeing on the screen now. So, um, and Dominium, um, just by way of background, we uh, have a, a southeast region development office that's based in Atlanta. So Mike Healy and myself, Nick Anderson, who are on the line, um, we work out of our Atlanta office and cover the, the Columbia market for our company. Um, we, we don't have a large South Carolina presence right now, but we do own and manage um, some projects in the Beaufort Hilton Head area. This would be our first in Columbia, um, but we're not, not new to this type of project. We have a 50 year history in affordable housing um, we have a, a, a long history of, of doing this type of housing, so we're very experienced at it and, and um, very capable of, of doing a project like this, of, of this uh, size and magnitude and everything. So uh, we just wanted to be available for questions and kind of give that overview, um, you know, to the extent that there are any questions from the commissioners, we'd be happy to, to address anything you guys have. And, and this is uh, DJ from, from Bible Way Church. Originally, we had a PUD that was uh, restrictive. And so we're just trying to um, just revise the PUD so that we can uh, implement this project. I think we, uh, I think a year or so ago, or just that, uh, Rachel and team can let us know, we, uh, we revised the PUD because uh, we're in talks with another development that's taking place with workforce housing on the opposite end of the senior housing um, within this uh, 80 or so acres we have surrounding the church. Yeah, and just to clarify, this isn't revising the PUD, this is getting rid of the PUD. Um, yeah. In 2017, um, they did carve out the portion that you see as RG2. They carved that out of the plans unit development and instead of continuing to just carve it up, um, after a lot of meetings, we all felt it best to just remove the plans unit development so they're not tied to such specific development patterns in the area that no longer are really applicable or in demand. Thank you, um, staff and, and the applicants. We appreciate that. Planning Commission, uh, do, you, do you have any follow-up questions for the applicant or staff? The, I have a question. This is Harris Cohn. The portion of the existing bud that fronts Bluff Road, what is the plan? Is that going to also go to C3 or is that, it may be in there. I can't remember where I might have seen that. The portion along Bluff Road will become C3 while the rest of the PUD becomes RG2. Okay. So what, what is the the primary difference in the FUD as it is now compared to the RG2? Um, it, has very, it has very specific locations for where certain development is supposed to go. So apartments okay. are supposed to go in one area, townhomes, garden homes. It's very, very specific in its site plan. So it hinders flexibility. Okay, but the, the, the portion, one part's already C3, and then on Bluff Road, and then that part extending up will also would also go to C3? Yeah, the C3 was one that was annexed in, and so it'll continue on along Bluff Road just to give some options for, because there was a commercial component to the PUD anyway, so it just gives some flexibility there. Gotcha. Thank you. Yep. And I assume that the neighborhood was notified and all of the appropriate signage was place yes we've gotten a lot of calls where we explained to the neighborhood what the request was about so they definitely saw the sign and there wasn't any 
particular feedback or? Not that I'm aware of. Um, most of the calls my staff fielded were just general, what is this? Just making sure it was nothing crazy. So we didn't okay. get any op specific opposition. Okay. And so you know that the church has been working closely with the, na the neighborhood and the surrounding community. Uh, we work closely with developing um, Congaree Point, which is the na neighborhood adjacent to uh, the property um, and the church is directly across the street. So we've been working closely with them just to, um, so that they are aware of everything that's taking place. Great, any other questions from Planning Commission? Um, yes, I have a brief question. As noted, there's 106 acres of land that's included in this. How much of that land is being used for the um, apartments across the street from the church? And can you briefly tell me about what, what's in the rest of the property? I can address the uh, first part of the question. The um, senior apartment community that we have planned would be built on 12 acres. And then as far as the plan for the rest of the site, I would have to defer to DJ. And so the current uh, property that's already zoned for R RG2, I believe it is, uh, we are developing workforce housing with about 15 acres, 15 to 20 acres of that, uh, with about 200 uh, workforce development uh, apartments there as well. And there is a uh, planning going on right now, but nothing is concrete for, for the rest of the development. Okay, thank you. Any additional questions at this time before we go to public comment? So we'll go ahead and go to public comment. Again, we encourage those who would like to comment via email or the web to begin sending in letters and emails. Emails should be sent to COC board meeting at columbiasc.gov or on the web at https colon forward slash forward slash public input dot com slash coc pc dash april or apr 2021 for those wanting to leave a voicemail or speak live please call 855-925-2801 and when prompted, please enter the meeting code 3506. Then you may press star two to leave a voicemail or press star three to speak live. Please be sure your computer audio is off to avoid any feedback. We'll give a brief minute to wait to see if any feedback or comments come in via email or phone call. I'm not seeing any emails come through. Okay. And likewise, I do not have any callers that wish to speak. Okay. No emails and no callers on the line. Still no new correspondence, right? And any last follow up questions from Planning Commission? I do have one other question. Uh, this is Harris. Is there uh, in Rachel? I'm, you may know more on this. With the property backing up to the Columbia Industrial Park, will that become a residential use place or impose any challenges on the people in that park with regard to buffers or setbacks? Um. The planned unit development had residential in that area as well. Um, it was a very residential heavy PUD. Um, so some landscaping may come into play, but if there's already developed parcels, it's not going to affect those. So 
So, I mean, if there's already businesses in place in the industrial park, they're going to be fine. Um, but they would have had buffer requirements regardless for any yeah. new development there. They won't, they won't change it or make it more intense. Thank you. Mm -hmm. All right, any other questions? Hearing none, I'll accept the motion. Anyone wanna throw a motion out there? Mr. Chairman, I'm, um um, put a motion out to approve the number 10 on the agenda. Got a motion that we approve the request for item 10. Can I get a second? A second. Got a motion and a second. All in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Any aye. opposed say no. The ayes have it. The motion is approved. That's going to take us to um, the site plan that's at 3452 North Main Street, 3500 North Main Street, 1217 Sunset Drive, um, and 1205 through 1211 Phillips Street. Um, various TMS numbers 0912-06-06, um, 0912 06-06, 0912-06-07. 10912-07-01 and 09112-07-06. And this is um, a proposal for the North Main Brewery, um, which is a mixed-use development. And the project will entail the renovation of a 66,000 square foot manufacturing building um, that will um, contain a brewery, a tap room, fitness center. Um, and a catering facility. Um, it will also entail the construction of a, a 53,000 square foot um, three-story office building and the de demolition of an existing building to create a parking lot. Um, the site plan, once you look at the site plan, you will be able to, um, let's see here, um, looking at the site plan, you'll see that it entails um, part of the Avondale um, right of way, which is owned by SCDOT, as well as the city of Columbia as um, DOT, the city of Columbia, Phillips Street um, right of way, um, which will be utilized for parking. Um, and I just wanna, you know, for the record, that process would be handled through court action. Um, and, but it is also shown um, regarding the um, Phillips Street closure, and we have um, informed them that, of course, that is part of the um, court action procedure. Um, due to the size of the development, um, we've requested a traffic impact study, um, and the traffic impact study, it's our understanding, is underway, um, but it is not complete yet. Um, and so staff has asked that um, if the commission considers this request that they um, give it a deferral until the next month until we um, receive the traffic impact study. Um, there are several comments in the case summary um, and a lot of them are general in nature. Um, staff is generally favorable of the request, but again, we're um, waiting to see what the traffic impact study states um, with regards to um, offsite improvements and things of that nature. Um, the applicant is present and I can believe um, can explain their case if um, staff, if the commission doesn't have any um, questions for staff. So just to clarify, the planning department is asking for a deferral on this. Correct. Pending the um, traffic impact study, we have not received a traffic impact study yet. So we, from a staff perspective, we can't recommend approval of it waiting on that. Right, so we don't have it yet. And correct. we assume it's, that we will have it next next month and we could discuss it then. Correct. Okay. All right, so we've no. heard. 
Mr. Chambers, um, do we have any questions, any additional questions for staff before hearing from the applicant? Hearing none, if the applicant's available, we'd love to hear any any additional information that staff yeah. might mention. Can, can you hear me? Um, this yes. is this is Floyd Burnett. I'm a civil engineer with the land plan group. Um, I'm I'm the applicant, but I'm actually going to turn the floor over to uh, Scott Middleton, who's the developer right now, so he can give you kind of an overview of the project. Then I'll come back online um, and kind of give you a, an overview of the, the actual site, uh, and then can maybe answer some of your questions uh, regarding um, Jonathan's comments. So Scott, do you want to? Kind of give them a, a brief overview and then I'll come back online and talk about site specifics. Okay, I'm, I'm a little bit confused because we understood that the staff was not going to ask to defer this, so I'm a little upset about that. Um, and we've been talking to the city all week and that was not part of the plan, so I guess we do need to address that at some point because there, a lot of this is very time sensitive um, for us to move forward with this project. So, um, but just to give you a quick overview, um, this uh, 62,000 square foot building, which was Stone Manufacturing Company, has been vacant for a large number of years. And um, the city and the community have been looking for something to put in it. It's an historic building uh, that has already been approved for federal tax credits for the historic. It's a large space and it was really difficult really to find the right project to go into this space to be able to utilize appropriately. Um, so we finally settled on putting a, a, a brewery in that space and have really been working diligently for almost the last two years on this project. Um, then um, as, as part of that project right next door to it, we've decided because now it's in a, an opportunity zone and there's um, our it's a pretty the large South Carolina house calls, which is a business that um, and building an office building. So we have a 53 square foot office building planned on that site that will bring South Carolina house calls and South Carolina home or the house calls business that will employ um, on site about 350 people that it will bring uh, to uh, the city and to, uh, into the county about 650 jobs that will be related to this particular building. Um, so that's really kind of the brief overview of it. It's a, it is a large complex, large piece of property. Um, and in order to incorporate the proper, the, the uh, parking areas um, at, for both of those businesses, we really needed to have it, that expanded space, which would call for the closing of Phillips and Avondale. And I can get back into some of the site specifics. Um, uh, Scott did a good job of explaining, um, I guess, the overall project. Um, uh, Jonathan, if you want to go and, yeah, there we go, the site plan. Um, uh, so just to kind of give you a quick overview, we've, we've actually already been approved by um, the Board of Zoning Appeals for uh, a shared parking arrangement for the office um, and, and the brewery. So those, because those activities will be taking place at the same time. Uh, we worked with um, the um, DDRC and setting the setbacks of the new office building. We've gotten other variances for um, buffer yards and that kind of thing. Um, but one of the things that's real important to the developers is to make this both a safe uh, and, and functional destination site. Uh, and so one of the things in, in incorporating these two roads is doing is creating kind of a campus feel um, the, the access there at Phillips and Sunset is actually in the railroad right of way. Um, and so we felt like that was real important to actually move that out of the railroad right of way, provide a separate driveway access onto Sunset. Um, and we've actually had discussions with DOT um, about all of this. And so while no, we do not have the full construction report, we have their comments. Um, and all of these are based on, on their comments. Um, they like the fact of the driveway location on Sunset and closing Sunset or closing Phillips because of its close proximity to the railroad right away. They love the fact that we're taking over Avondale and that is a right in, right out. And then they also love the fact that we'll have gated access north on Phillips uh, to uh, Miller, intersection of Miller and North Main. Uh, that allows uh, patrons to get to a stoplight 
Um, and so while we don't have that traffic study in, in completion, we have had lots of discussions with DOT uh, to try to provide uh, a workable plan, a safe plan um, that works for everybody. Um, so that's kind of in a nutshell, open myself up uh, the developer for questions. And we also have uh, Josh with Lambert Architects uh, on the line as well, if you have any questions about the building, so. Thank you. Um, any questions from Planning Commission to the applicant? I had, I got one question. Do any of the parcels along Phillips Street access Phillips Street now today? So the, the brewery owns both sides of Phillips Street. So they own a triangular piece between Phillips and the railroad, and then they own their main parcel. Um, and so everything else is owned by the brewery. So, so we're not, we're not closing off anybody's access on Phillips that isn't owned by the brewery or, or, and, and Avondale for that matter. Okay. So yeah, maybe I was thinking of Avondale. Avondale's the road on the North end. Yeah, that's right. And, uh, the developer purchased two of the lots on Avondale. And so those are being incorporated into the project. And so there are no other parcels that access Avondale as well. So it's all kind of self-contained, which is another reason why it made sense to close those roads. Okay, thank you for that clarification. Sure. Any other questions from Planning Commission at this point? I guess I'm a little confused about the, what sounds like a lack of communication, but I mean, in terms of, from my perspective, we, got this agenda on Friday or whatever last week. And, um, you know, it clearly said that uh, the department was asking for a deferral. So don't know what happened there, but um, I guess it sounds like bottom line is that the parking, I mean, the traffic information isn't fully available, though it's partially available, but we don't have any of that information. Is that Correct. Um, well, we sent in a, a summary of the traffic study and, and discussions that the traffic engineers had with the DOT. Uh, and so we felt like we had addressed all of the DOT's concerns and things that would come up that might be of concern with the planning commission. And, and while no, we don't have all the 100 pages of, of data that usually accompanies the traffic study, we do have the nuts and bolts of the information um, reflected on our plan, you know, with research, discussions with DOT, that kind of thing. Um, so that's why we elected to move forward because we did have all that uh, kind of in hand, so to speak, although not in writing per se. So Mr. Burnett, you don't believe the traffic impact study once completed will change anything on your plan as presented today? Uh, not according to my traffic engineer and discussions that we've had with um, uh, Tyler Clark at DOT. Um, They're very much in favor. Um, you know, the biggest issue that they had was actually Phillips um, and that intersection and how it sends traffic into the railroad right away. And so, you know, they were excited that that was going to go away and we were pushing a driveway to be further away from the railroad right away and eliminating that access point. So that. Understood. Okay. Uh, so I, you know, I guess with, with all that, you know, we would, we would ask respectfully that we, we do get approval and, um, and I know staff would obviously want to review the traffic report um, in, in some time once we get that and, and that, that, you know, obviously that would be okay. Um, you know, we can't we can't move forward with any of this without the DOT approval, you know, which we're tied to have to adhere to what DOT wants. So um, there is kind of a I guess a backup, so to speak. Um, you know, we can't just go out and do this willy nilly. We got to have DOT's buy in on all this. Yeah, and this is a this is Jonathan. Just for clarity, our traffic engineer um, did receive the uh, memo that's referenced um, that was sent from the their traffic engineer. 
and our traffic and the city's traffic engineer um, felt like um, we still needed the traffic impact study. He is in receipt of the memo. Understood, thank you. Any, any additional comments from the applicant at this stage before we move to public comment? Hearing none, we'll open it up for public comment. Uh, we encourage those who would like to comment via email or the web to begin sending in letters and emails. Email COC board meeting at Columbia SC.gov or on the web at HTTPS colon slash slash public input.com slash COC PC dash APR. 2021. For those wanting to leave a voicemail or speak live, please call 855-925-2801. And when prompted, please enter the meeting code 3506. You may then press star two to leave a voicemail or star three to speak live. Please be sure your computer audio is off to avoid any feedback. We will pause briefly to allow any public input. <coughs> the chair, I do have one speaker um, who would, would like to enter the queue. Okay, yeah, put them through, please. <clears throat> Hello? Uh, this is Jim Daniel. Can you hear me? Yes, sir, Jim. Uh, I'm a real estate broker with Catawba Properties. I do not believe Chris Freeman is on this line. He's the owner of Sox and Freeman. A um, couple of concerns. One, uh, let me be sure I heard something right. Did y'all say that there would be 350 people that would be involved in the office billing slash brewery? that would need parking on site? Yes, that's correct. No. 350 people? That That's, um, well, not all at one time. This is a, a healthcare facility that well, works on tracks, and so that's how many people would be employed. Well, how many people would be there at one time? I mean, you've got you've got you've got a parking lot on Phillips, and then you've got the parking lot that you show on your site plan, uh, and then you've got the brewery that's going to have ongoing operations. I guess one concern from the neighborhood would be where are all these people going to park? Well, we've actually worked out a, a shared parking arrangement, uh, and we've got a, 180 parking spaces. Um, that covers uh, the needs of, of the facility. Uh, so that would be the most cars that you would have at any one given time, would be 180, which is what was approved in a shared parking special exception. Okay. Uh, I wrote a letter to Jordan Stiles with LTC management on March 17th, which, I, which was the individual that was listed as the contact person for the closing of the road. I also called Mr. Stiles Mr. Freeman has called Mr. Stiles. Uh, we've yet to hear from him uh, as to the plans or answer any questions. For a project that's been underway for two years, there seems to be a, be a considerable lack of communications with the neighbors. Uh, Sox and Freeman has a number of large trucks with large pieces of equipment on them that has a very, they have a very difficult time accessing Miller, uh, or cook off of Main Street. They typically access Phillip Street as they come down uh, uh, Sunset Boulevard. So uh, their concern is by closing Phillip Street, you've eliminated one of their best ways to get to their operations in the 3800 block of uh, Miller Avenue. I, I mean, uh, Phillip Street. And this 
I think I think Greg Middleton finally got in touch with Mr. Freeman a week ago, but uh, he's been really left out of the loop. And connecting elements also, uh, not connecting elements, there's a, a warehouse at the corner of Cook and Miller that also utilizes large uh, delivery vans uh, and connecting systems. And they, they've had they they've also raised the same same concerns about access to Phelps being eliminated. So we we need to address that. Uh my understanding of Mr. Miller Mr. Freeman's conversation with Greg Middleton is that they were gonna get back with him and I don't know whether that's happened yet or not. So that's one issue that, that uh Sox and Freeman has and I think one other large warehouse owner has in that vicinity that the elimination of Phillips is going to cause a problem with them. So are you representing the warehouse as well? No, I'm Sox and Freeman right now, but I, but I, but I, I'm not an attorney, You're but I've been as in if touch. You are representing. I, that's why. Well, Sox and Freeman, Sox and Freeman and the other guys have, have, uh, have expressed some interest to me. I'm not necessarily representing them. I've just told them and I've met with them and they said, well, we may have the same concerns Sox and Freeman has. But right now, I'm not involved with them other than passing on what they told me. Thank you, Mr. Daniel. Scott, let's let's hear a public comment, please. And then at the end, you'll have an opportunity to speak again, please. Um, any other public comment? out there emails or phone calls i have not received any emails at this point okay any other phone and calls? i likewise do not have any additional calls okay uh, so we've heard some public comment regarding street closures does planning commission have any additional questions for the applicant Or would the applicant like to say anything else prior to planning commission moving forward? Well, I, I'm not sure this planning commission was about the road closure at that point. I think that was a Department of Transportation issue. Um, I, I will say there are quite a bit of issues, um, at, as I understand with DOT, about where Phillips Street is located now, because you, in order to turn right on the Street coming down Sunset, you would have to slow down and nearly stop on the railroad track in order to make that turn. So it's a pretty dangerous situation, um, but it would be detrimental to the project, I think, if we have huge, large trucks continuing to flow through um, that space at fast speeds where, where we own the property on both sides. I do have a question for the applicant. Have you talked to the businesses that are in the area? Closing down the streets or if of the community. Um, yeah, we we put up the we put up notices and asked folks to call. This was the only one that we'd really heard from that was related to that. And from the we met with the homeowners associations out in that area and others, and they were very supportive of the project. As we said, that building has been sitting and those lots have been sitting in people a long time, and they're very anxious to see uh, something different change for that community. Okay, thank you. It sounds like there are some concerns though with the traffic, um, uh, lack of clarity around what's gonna happen with the Sox and Freeman trucks and, and some other concerns. And that's what we're waiting on is a full traffic report. Um, and I guess that still sounds like it's hanging out there. Yep. Any other any other comments or questions to the applicant? Hearing none, we'll I'll entertain a motion. Um, I will move that we defer the um, item that is listed as number 12 
on the planning commission agenda. Okay, thank you. Got a motion to defer. Any second. other? Sir, um, get a second. Got a second. Got a motion and a second. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed, say no. No. The ayes have it. The motion is to defer item number 12. We want to do a count of that, Lucinda. I'm just, I just want to make sure that's clear in the record. And sorry, I'm on mute. We can certainly do a roll call. Sure. Yeah, I'm just not sure who all's on the, you know, I, I would, I just want to make sure that it. Gotcha. Yeah, no problem. Uh, Mr. Cohn? No. Ms. Davis? No. Mr. Hart? No. Ms. Hart? Yes. Ms. James? Is she here? Uh, Dr. Mandel? Yes. So we're voting on deferral. Correct. And so that was my concern. So, yeah. yeah. I only heard one no before. So, yeah. Um, yeah, that's what I was confused about. So, just to be clear, I, I mean, I hate to do this, but I, I mean, I think so the vote is. I'm saying I voted for deferral. That was a yes. And my understanding is every other person that said no was saying that they did they not want to defer. defer. If that's not correct, I mean, I, I guess I just want to be clear. Sorry. Yes, no, thank well, you. Thank you for that, because I, I did want to change my, my vote to a yes for deferral. I apologize. I didn't quite understand that vote. No, I think there. I it got all confused. So listen, <laughs> I hate to do this, but can no, you no, do this fine. one more time and just do a roll call and say yeah. a vote for yes is a vote for referral. I mean, deferral, and just make sure we go through one more time because I, I got yeah. Thanks. Correct. Okay. So the motion is to defer number twelve, the site plan approval. Mr. Cohn. No. Miss Davis. Ms. Davis? Oh, I said yes. Okay. Mr. Hart? No. Ms. Hart? Yes. Dr. Mandel? Yes. Ms. Thomas? Yes. Mr. Tupper? Yes. And Mr. Frost? No. We still have a motion that passes with five to two. So the case will be deferred. Thanks, Lucinda. I just wanted to clarify it was hard. Oh, thank when you. Thank you for pointing that out. I just there were, there were three no's, wasn't it? Three no's, yeah. Yeah, sorry, five to three. Sorry. Just trying to make sure it's hard in this format to hear. All right. No, I appreciate the clarification. Absolutely. So we'll move to item number 14. All right, um, the final item on the agenda is a zoning text amendment. It's to amend section 17283C, um, table three of the code of ordinances to remove the special exception requirement um, for placement of wireless communication facilities on existing support structures. Um, this applies in residential districts, as well as um, it was a special exception for certain heights as well that is removed too. So it's just the overall special exception requirement is being removed for those. Um, the small cell wireless, um, what is it? The Small Wireless Facilities Deployment Act took effect in September of 2020 and that preempts a great deal of local control over the cell nodes. And it states that such review needs to be at an administrative level instead of at a boards and commissions level. So that's where this change is coming from. Okay, we've heard the case summary from Mrs. Bailey. Any, uh, any questions to staff regarding this case? Hearing none, we'll move to public comment. 
Again, we encourage those who would like to comment via email or the web to begin sending in letters and emails. Emails should go to cocboardmeeting at columbiasc.gov or on the web at https colon slash slash public input dot com slash cocpc dash apr 2021. For those wanting to leave a voicemail or speak live, please call 855-925-2801. And when prompted, please enter the meeting code 3506. Then you may press star two to leave a voicemail or press star three to speak live. Please be sure your computer audio is off to avoid any feedback. We will briefly pause to allow any comments to come in via email or voicemail. <clears throat> any emails or voicemails on this one, Lucinda or Andrew? I have not received any email on this one. And likewise, I've not received any voicemails. Um, I also do not have any callers that um, have indicated they want, want to speak. Okay. Hearing no comments from the public, are there any additional questions from the Planning Commission? Hearing none, I'll entertain a motion. Mr. Chair, I move that item number 14 be accepted as presented. Got a motion to approve item 14. Can I get a second? Second. Got a motion and a second. All in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed, please say no. Sounds like the ayes have it. The motion is approved. Do we have any other business this evening? We do not have any other business that I'm aware of. All right, having no other business, I'll uh, accept the motion that we adjourn. So moved. Got a motion. Can I get a second? Second. Second. Motion, second. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Say no. Ayes have it. The meeting is adjourned. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good, good night. night.